Marie. Hmm? Do you think you could stop that? Long enough to listen to this? Yes, darling. Marie? I'm listening. It has a religious quality. Therefore, no good. Well, you know my feelings on that subject. Yes, I know your feelings on that subject. Is it the music you object to or the church? Oh, Franz, let's not play angel and devil with each other. You have your beliefs, I have mine. What about the children's beliefs? Do you really care? Yes, I do care. I care very much. I want them to have the consolation of the faith. What consolation has it ever brought you? I'll try to make them understand, Franz, that while they must believe in all the virtues, you and I find it easy to live in adultery. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Franz. I know you're concerned with your work, but it will come, darling. It yeah, will. I know. You've said that before. Yes, where are you? Who's there? Ha ha. Georges, Chopin. And I seem to recognize that fat shadow behind you, Poutin. Maestro, your devoted manager. My ex-manager. Well, come up, come up, all of you. Did you invite these people first? These people are Chopin, Georges, Saint. They're my friends. What do you expect me to do, close the door on their faces? I don't see why not. Please be reasonable. But I am. It's my vice. It seems reasonable to me that since we left Paris to get away from your friends... Not entirely my friends. Your husband had something to do with it, too. Is everything out of the coach? Yes, yes, everything. Everything. George! Oh, Run! Now, what are you doing? Oh, it's so good to see you. Where have you been hiding? In the mountains, my dear. I'll take your coat. Thank Go in there. Marie will be delighted to see you. Thank you, you. Very Maestro! Oh, dear. Not you, oh, Not the you. Not you. Same joke. Same Maestro. <laughs> Oh, welcome to Chamonix, monsieur. Madame. Ah, uh, Countess, I'm enchanted. Positively enchanted. My dear, I'm so happy to see you. You've no idea what a sensation you caused when you left Paris. For a whole month, you monopolized the newspapers. Oh, really? List runs off with the Countess. I told myself I must see this Marie de Gaulle close up. You're lovely. Thank you, madame. It seems to be the only virtue Paris has left me. Well, sit down, sit down. We look like a scene from a bad opera. Fortin, Georges, Frederick, you sit here. Frederick, tell me the news, tell me the news. The only chatter I've heard in the last 18 months has been from the squirrels. Maestro, Paris has a new idol, Thalberg. What? A line of the concert stage. All winter he's roared. Isn't it true, Chopin? The greatest pianist, they say, since Liszt. Since Liszt. That's very funny, Potter. When did they bury me? Ah, maestro, you've buried yourself. <laughs> that is my son, Daniel. He's a great critic of my music. <laughs> He's right, too. His nurse is with him. Frederick. You see, your music enchants him, Frederick. I've been looking at this beautiful countryside and trying to imagine your life here. 
we live simply, madame? Life anywhere could never be simple with Franz Liszt. God didn't make him simple. I shall alter that. I see. And what will you do, Countess, if Liszt goes on tour again? I don't think Franz will make any more tours, madame. Liszt is the finest pianist of our time. He can't retire at this stage of his career. He has a greater career awaiting him. As what? A composer. Let me give you a small piece of advice. We are what we are. It's disastrous to try to make a man what he was never intended to be. Do you think, madam, that I left the security of marriage, my life in Paris, damaged my reputation, my children's future, for the sake of a piano player? Piano player? Since we've been here, he's written his first serious composition. Can Paris say as much for the time he spent there? Well, he certainly enjoyed himself. We're not here, madame, to enjoy ourselves. I wish I could play my music that well. No doubt Liszt wishes he could compose that well. Yes, indeed. Potin, Potin, tell me, how, how good is this fellow Thalberg? Magnificent, according to the critics. Hmm. When, um, when's his next concert? On the 15th, in Paris. He's taken the Salle Playo. Maestro, if you would return, I, I want guarantee... some more to drink. Let's all go out somewhere and drink. Let's drink until the angels... But now, what would you say? What would you say if I said that I would give a recital on the same night, the same night, as Thalberg at the conservatoire across the street? I'd say you were drunk. <laughs> you would be I'd say you were right, my fat friend. <laughs> you were right, my fat friend. Let's go for some more wine. When is he Work the bellows, Potter.
It's past four. You're waking the whole village. I hope you found this very entertaining. Perhaps you'll now leave us alone. Are you coming home, Franz? What time? Arrange that recital for me. Certainly, Maestro, certainly. Well, and make it on the same night as Thalberg. The same night? We'll discuss this tomorrow. Monsieur Franz Liszt is not himself. On the contrary, Marie, I am very much myself. The same night. What's happening? Mutiny. Don't give up so easily, madame. Packed, maestro, packed. Just like in the old days. return to Paris. My concert is cancelled. Your money will be refunded. I find myself unable to resist saying it. I told you so. This is absurd. I think we should hear this, Monsieur Liszt, as Felix suggested. Thank you. 
giant, still the conqueror, still the most magnificent. Naturally, Potan, naturally. Naturally. Maestro, your friend Prince Lechnowski wishes to present you to his distinguished guests. Delighted. Have my mother brought to the dressing room. At once, Maestro. Felix, I'm so glad to see you again. And I'm so glad to see you back among the living. Franz Liszt. Two friends who wish to add their congratulations to mine. Their Highnesses Prince Nicholas and Princess Caroline Sein Wittgenstein. Extraordinary performance, Liszt. You must come and play for the Tsar someday. I should be honored, Your Highness. Uh, Prince Nicholas is the Tsar's aide de camp. I'll have to arrange it. You're, you're Hungarian, I believe. Yes, I am. We're so sorry for your people. They suffered so much this winter. Such disaster. Yes, madam, indeed. I feel very deeply for my countrymen. Monsieur Liszt is anxious to give a charity concert on their behalf, Your Highness. In Vienna, perhaps. Well, you play quite well, Liszt. I'm sure the Tsar will enjoy hearing you. Monsieur Liszt, perhaps we shall see you in Vienna. We are nowhere there for the opera season. It will give me the greatest pleasure, madame. Remember me to your countess, Franz. What is this disaster she's talking about? The Danube floods. Oh, a catastrophe. An opera share from a nice little charity recital or two in Vienna could be. Where's my mother? I was told she left Maestro. We must consider the possibility of an Austrian tour. All the nobility will be there. Mother? Mother, where are you? Why didn't you come back? I waited for you. You were with all those people. That was a prince, Mother. A Russian prince. He asked me to play for the Tsar. That's a great honor. For the Tsar? Oh, <laughs> was I good tonight? You are always yes, good. Yes, I had to show them. I have to show them tonight. I'd been away too long. Who else were you showing? <laughs> you know me better than anyone, don't you? It was the Princess Sein Wittgenstein. Oh, I was being polite. She's a beautiful woman with a great knowledge of classical music. She's married to the prince. So is Mary. She was married, too. The children send their love to you. They keep asking when their grandmother's going to see them. I thought I'd go to see them next week. Oh, wonderful. Will you be there? I may have to play in Vienna, a charity concert. They've had terrible floods in Hungary. Will she be in Vienna, that princess? I'm going to Vienna to help our people. They're starving. Whole villages have been washed away. If I can help, I must. And then where will you go? Well, there's talk of an Austrian tour. And who will you help on that? Myself, and Marie, and my children. I'm always going away on tours like this. I always come back to Marie and the children, you know that. You know I'd never hurt them. With Marie, at least your life was orderly. But not enough. What can be enough for you? Oh, you could tell me that. You end by wasting yourself, Franz, and mocking God. Well, no, I'd never do that. I'd never do I that. I know you, Franz. <laughs> At the concert, I told the people next to me you were my son. <laughs> well, I was boasting, too. I told the people next to me that you were my mother. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, I try, I try, I try. <sighs> but it's difficult to be either good or bad. I'm part gypsy, part priest. When I'm alone, I want the world. When I have the world, I, I want the peace and seclusion of a monastery. I'm at war. I'm at war with myself. Mother. Pray tonight. What shall I pray for, Franz? Pray for your son. The suffering which the disastrous Danube floods has caused my people has touched me deeply, Marie. Touched me deeply. Potan my eternally devoted manager, has arranged a charity no, concert. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. 
The princess signed Wittgenstein, who attended my recital. No. No essay. Um, the prince and princess signed Wittgenstein, who attended my recital, have persuaded me to give a charity concert in Vienna on behalf of the flood victims. And I feel I cannot do less for my unhappy people. Please believe me, Marie. I think often of you and the children. Seventy-six kronen. Send my share to the countess. Helis, I'm interrupting, but they've tried to stop me from seeing you. My music frightens them. No one will listen. I go from door to door like a beggar. I'm very sorry. You have never heard music like mine. I have created a form. Yes, I'm certain you have. Look, here is my latest score. An opera. I ask you to produce it. You have power, influence. I also have an important engagement here. Uh... Wagner. Richard Wagner. Nothing's more important. Well, why don't you see my manager? He's a nice man. He's over there. Tell him I sent you. Sire, Franz Liszt. You have a great gift, Herr Liszt. Your Majesties are most kind. The unhappy victims of the flood will bless you for this. I'm deeply grateful to Your Majesties for your presence here tonight. I am still spellbound, monsieur. Perhaps that's because your gracious heart is open to my music, madam. You must play for us at St. Petersburg. I cannot permit you to deprive the Imperial Court of the chance to see what a magician you are. You will get an official invitation. I regret that I... That is the command, monsieur Liszt. Since it is your command, madame, I am delighted to obey. The 
careful, France. Don't forget, Russia defeated even the great Napoleon. Napoleon couldn't play the piano. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. I can hear every note. Mm, the Russians will love you. The Tsar may bestow a decoration on you. The Order of the White Eagle. The Cross of St. Andrew. The Garter of Lady Caroline. Await his imperial majesty. Where is that impossible man? My brother will never learn that an artist has as much right to consideration as a king. Take order the music to begin. It is our wish that both students and teachers wear uniform. Before promulgating this decree, sir, would it not be good to wait until... No, we don't wish to wait one day more, Wittgenstein. Now, sister. <coughs> is this younger area? Franz Liszt. Your Highness will forgive me for interrupting the royal conversation. What is the man? Get my manager. Get my cloak. Get my cloak! Monsieur Liszt. Even the Tsar of Russia shouldn't be permitted to treat an artist like a lackey. His behavior was unpardonable, but I am sure he did not mean it. I suppose it must be quite difficult to be all-powerful and polite. Obviously, his imperial majesty finds it quite beyond him. Forgive me. I'm the one who's being impolite. I've quite forgotten to tell you how happy I am to see you again, madame. How very happy. Thank you, Monsieur Liszt. And now, perhaps you will overlook the Tsar's thoughtlessness. I've been looking forward so to hearing you again. I expect you have forgotten the first time I heard you play in Paris. I remember you very well, madam. For me, it is a cherished memory. And then Vienna. Won't you please play for me once more? It was the sole purpose in my journey to Russia. And I would go further. Will you be going to Kiev? I have my estates near there. List. Do not construe that as an invitation. His Imperial Majesty is waiting. 
Your wish is still my command, madam. I would love to have a man like that at Weimar to direct the music at my court. My tour of Russia, my tour of Russia has been fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. And... Potan, my eternally devoted manager, has arranged a series of important recitals. Which of necessity will keep me away from you for some considerable time. My tour begins in... Brussels, Berlin? Berlin, Brussels, Vienna, yes, Rome, I know, Zagreb. I know, I know, but where does it begin? In Dresden, Maestro. In Dresden.
away from the window. Keep them happy. Oh, I don't have... They're like a dragon. They'll come every night for your blood, and every night you have to kill it. And the next night is back again, breathing fire. You have to kill it all over again. But you also love them, don't you, Franz? Or is it that you just can't live without them? Marilyn, it's so good to see you again. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be in my room, Maestro. Some contracts to examine. <laughs> You don't seem very surprised to see me. I half expected you. But I am rather surprised the way you came. Without telling me in the middle of the night. That's unlike you. If I had told you I was coming, you would have managed not to see me. Well, that's not true. Oh, you would have found an excuse. Another piano recital, a common performance. Nothing untrue. Simply convenient. I see. You've come to give me a list of my faults, huh? I came to ask you if you knew what you were doing. I'm giving concerts and making money for you and the children. Is that all? That's part of my life. The part that sickens me. The way you run to a close, like a child runs to a sweet. Cannot lie, I cannot lie. I like to perform. You like what's easy for you. Easy! For you. Easy, you call it easy to sit at that piano. To have that audience at your feet waiting for you, waiting there, testing you. Daring you. Like a woman who wants you to make her feel and is ready to leave you if you can't. You call it a dragon before. Are women dragons to you? <laughs> I don't know, perhaps. Am I? That's enough, Mary. How are the children? Are they well? Mm. We miss you. Yes, I miss them too. Is Daniel's cold better? Almost. He's still in bed. He makes me read your letter to him every night. I write him a new letter tomorrow. Each time I look at him, I see you. I see you in all of them. And everywhere. At the piano, playing. Coming to me, exhausted. And I hold you in my arms. France. Come back to me. Have I ever... Have I ever left you, Marie? There's an island in the Rhine in the middle. It's called Nonaverth. There's a little half-ruined convent and some huts. Next summer, we'll, we'll lease it. Oh, Franz. I gave up so much for you. You always manage, don't you? You always manage to remind me of that. Always. It is remarkable how a woman will never let you forget ever the sacrifice she's made for you and the price she's going to make you pay for it. Principle plus interest. I never asked you to pay for anything. But I'll pay. I'll pay. Somehow I'll have to pay. But it'll be my debt. My debt, not yours. And I shall pay it in guilt, in boredom, and self-disgust. <laughs> Will you be back? Yes, I'll be back. Soon.
Thank you, gentlemen. We will resume in ten minutes. You must watch me in the Multistretto. Bravo, 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 magnificent. I've never heard music like that before in all my life. It's revolutionary, especially your, your use of the horns. My admiration, sir. I'm Liszt. I'm sorry, I'm being very rude. I know exactly how difficult it is to be interrupted myself, but... Haven't we met somewhere before? We have. I once asked you to read this score, which you now find so magnificent. You had no time. You were too drunk with applause. I apologize. I apologize for my heart. I'm always, always doing this. But if there's anything ever I can do, in any way... If I write some piano music, something requiring great technical skill, I may send it to you. Finally at home. Where's the Countess? She went back to Chamonix two hours ago. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? You know me too well. After all, we've been together for years. Yeah. Yes, and you're still the only person I don't hurt. And you know why? Because our friendship is firm. It is based on a solid foundation. Money. I care about other things Well, then you will money. be hurt. You will be hurt, Potan. <laughs> and probably by me. You're depressed because the Countess came. You'll feel better when we get to Weimar. Here are the contracts. You're playing for the Grand Duchess there, the Tsar's sister. She likes you very much. Well, I'm charming. You tell her, the Grand Duchess, that I'm not performing for you. Tell all the managements the same thing. I'm not going on with this tour. You won't even play here? I wouldn't even play anywhere. I'm tired of performing. Princess Wittgenstein will be very disappointed. She's living in Kiev, you know. Uh, I'm told the poor lady is little enough in her life. She's very unhappy with her husband. They haven't really lived together for years. Oh, She's a beautiful woman, the princess. Potan, <laughs> you are an evil man. <laughs> you might even be the devil. <laughs> all right, all right. Make the arrangements. We leave tomorrow. For Weimar? No, for Kiev. Maestro. Tremendous. The princess left before I'd even finished. A windfall, Maestro. Two hundred rubles in gold for you to play in the cathedral tomorrow. You know perfectly well that I never accept money for playing in the church. Maestro, in the cathedral, it will be a great advertisement. It'll be just as great an advertisement if I play for nothing. Give it to a charity. All of it, Potin.
Oh, thank you for playing for my people today. The money. It was you. I wanted everyone to share my delight at hearing you. Everyone except his highness. My husband left for St. Petersburg. When is your next concert? At your highness's pleasure. Now, play me something of your own. After Beethoven. No, please. Does your husband like music? No, Nicholas prefers hunting. Prince is very sensible. I think you commit the sin of pride, Monsieur Liszt. Amongst the others, I commit. Have you no virtues? Well, I've never yet struck a woman or kicked a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. What, monsieur? Love. I imagine this house hasn't heard that sound too frequently. Oh, my life is not important. Yours is. You have a gift. A divine gift. Which I abuse. Which you doubt. Isn't that why you no longer write music? I need the money. Money? Yes, madam, money. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to choose my parents. They neglected to provide for me. Um, now you're annoyed. I normally discuss money matters with my manager and music with my publisher. And with women? But they're best qualified to discuss. Love? Yes, love, madam. I've traveled half across Europe in a most uncomfortable coach. Now it's stopped. At my destination. I didn't play for the Tsar of Russia, nor for the victims of the Danube floods. Ever since Vienna, I've played for one woman. A woman alone in a great hall. Every time I looked up from the keyboard, all I could see was the light in her eyes. Dim the chandeliers. And when I finished playing, the only applause I heard was hers. I apologize, madam. Why don't you ring your bell and have the servant show me out? I don't go on to France least with dazzles women and bows from a platform. I'm sorry. I must remember not to dazzle you next time I give a concert. France. What I believe in, I trust. I've never seen the face of God, but I believe in him. Your faith is commendable, madam. And, and I believe in you, too. In God and Franz Liszt? Yes. God won't fail you, madam. I shall. I don't think so. I... Uh... I play next in Odessa. Can you be there? If you want me to be. You'll see a performer. But if your faith is strong enough, you... You might see something else.
Ladies and gentlemen of Odessa, that last encore marked my final bow as a concert pianist. My public career ends tonight. Tell the piano player we wish to speak to him. At once, Your Highness. Maestro, what have you done? You all survived, Potin. There are other pianists. There is only one list. Mm. And I must live as one list, not as two. Monsieur, His Highness Prince Nicholas and Wittgenstein desires your presence. He'll desire it less when I get there. You have something to say to me? I was curious to know what brings a man to give up a career when he's still young enough to enjoy so many of its, uh, shall we say, advantages. Oh, Nicholas. If you were truly curious, Your Highness, I would tell you. But as the reason for your question is based on the way you put it contemptible, I shall only say that it's no concern of yours. We do not fight with gypsies. We have them whipped and sent to the mines. Mr. List, will you pardon my husband's rudeness? And I accept my joy at your decision. In my decision, you were heaven's instrument. Please leave us. I had no idea, Caroline, that during my stay in St. Petersburg, you were the instrument of heaven. I thought you were serving a rather more earthly cause. I have something to tell you, Nicholas. You're in love with that peasant. Do you think I have no eyes? Your face shines with it. I intend to seek a divorce. You can't be serious. I suppose this sort of fellow can be attractive to women. I can understand an infatuation. But, but you still cannot understand me. I want the divorce to marry him. The Tsar will never permit a divorce. The Tsar is not God, Nicholas. The supreme sacrifice, Potin. I've laid my career at the feet of a princess. Last time it was the feet of a countess. And what came of it? Maestro, there is no shortage of composers. Good composers. You think I'll be bad? Whatever you may become. Maestro, there's Bach, Beethoven, Schubert, Chopin, and the rest. There are many great composers. But there's one list to play their work as it has never been played before. Superlatively. Bravo, bravissimo. Thank you, Potan. There are your contracts. You could have at least warned me of your intention. I would have made out of your retirement a memorable occasion. We could announce it in some great city. In Paris, Maestro. We could make a fortune every time you retire. Think of Madame the Countess and your dear children, Meister. Potan, if you don't rob me in the final accounting as you usually do, they will be well provided for. Maestro, this means my death. Franz Liszt? Yes? Will Franz Liszt be so good as to follow me? Follow you? Follow you where? I cannot say, sir. You're in Russia, Maestro. If he is Prince Wittgenstein's man. Are you from His Highness the Prince? Her Highness, sir. Of course he'd be told to say that, Maestro. Well, sir, if I don't return, you'll know that I've met my fate. A sublime fate.
Caroline. France, will you put your life in my hands? It's in your hands now. I've asked my husband to divorce me. And I must go to St. Petersburg to see the Tsar. Franz, listen to me. I want you to go to Weimar because the Grand Duchess a is, is a friend and <laughs> admires you. She was delighted when you insulted her brother. She has a brother. How nice. But, but the Tsar is a brother. Oh, Franz, listen. <laughs> I am listening to you. I am. The Grand Duchess has a brother whom I have insulted, and you want me to go to Weimar. Hmm? Weimar? The Duchess will offer you a post as musical director. You will have an orchestra. Yes, but oh, of country fiddlers. An opera house. Most undistinguished in Europe. And as soon as I have desire's consent to my divorce, I'll come to Weimar and be with you. Your Highness, Weimar has the most magnificent opera house <laughs> and the most brilliant orchestra. And besides, the Grand Duchess will be our ally. Supposing, supposing the Tsar doesn't grant your divorce? If God wills it, he will not refuse. I don't want to live under a cloud, France. I want our marriage sanctified by the church. Will you wait for me in Weimar? Mm -hmm. I'd prefer Paris. But in Weimar. Delighted that you've decided to settle in Weimar. I have appointed you my director of music with full authority to do whatever you choose. But I warn you that Monsieur Schellar, who is at the head of all our artistic activities, is a prickly little man. Try not to tread on his toes, but don't let him get in your way. Monsieur Liszt. I want you to make Weimar as important musically as our noble Goethe made it poetically. I want you to take our provincial little orchestra and whip it into greatness. I want you to bring us the finest music, old and new, perhaps some of your own. I shall make every effort in that direction, madam. Now, let us talk about Princess Caroline. You have a certain reputation, Franz Liszt, and I am not speaking of your virtuosity at the piano. Do you seriously intend to marry the princess if she is granted a divorce? I do with all my heart. You anticipate no opposition from any previous attachment? I understand that you have children by a Countess Dagou. Madam, that is a personal matter, about which I have taken the necessary steps. I only want it clearly understood that I want you to make Weimar famous musically, not scandalously. That was understood naturally. But if your highness has any hesitations, as it appears you have, we need be embarrassed no further. Your highness. Come, come, come. We must be friends, you know. Your highness is too kind. And you are too spoiled and too impertinent. But I like you, and I'm going to trust you. I will do whatever I can with my brother to persuade him to grant Princess Caroline's divorce. Oh, I... But I must remind you that he's not called the Iron Ruler for nothing. What if he refuses? That is for the princess herself to decide. So long as she does not decide to live here as your mistress. Madam, I must protest. We will see what the little father of all the Russias decrees. Show Monsieur Schellar in. Your Monsieur Schellar, Monsieur Liszt. My pleasure. 
I have appointed Monsieur Liszt director of music at our court. My pleasure. You have my complete confidence, gentlemen, and I look forward to a fruitful and a harmonious association. Good day. So it's true. What are you doing here? How oh, welcome you always make me, France. I didn't expect you. Nevertheless, I turn up. The bad penny. I understand the lady is devout. She has her faith, yes. Yes. Rich, beautiful, and religious. What an irresistible trinity. I don't intend to discuss this, Marie. I... Why not? All Europe is. Oh, you mustn't expect it to be our little secret, France. A princess and a Russian. Does she keep a tame bear? The Russians love bears. Flog their peasants, play the balalaika. She does play the balalaika, doesn't I've she? I've no idea, I don't know. Oh, she must. It's such a seductive instrument. Of course, of course, she knows you're making a fool of her, doesn't she? That I exist? That the children exist? Yes. But it doesn't bother her. It doesn't disturb a religious principle. How marvelous. I'm in love with her, Marie. Oh. <laughs> oh, my dear, Francis has never been in love with anything but his grand piano. She has consented to be my wife. No. No, it's a lie. Tell me it's a lie. You're only saying that to torture me. No, it's the simple truth, Marie. The simple truth? When has it become simple? And when has it become the truth? No. No, it's a lie. She'll go like the others. Like the little French governess, the actress. She'll vanish with her tame bears, her peasants. And you'll come back to me. Oh, France. France, what will I be without you? France. Don't, me, don't, don't. Please, please tell me it's a lie. She's not marrying you. Tell me it's a lie. Don't, please. Come in. Herr Liszt, Her Highness the Grand Duchess presents her compliments and requests the presence of her musical director for a matter of importance. Yeah, all right, thank you, thank you. Marie, I, I, I have to go now. I expected to see many things, France, when I left Paris to live with you. But I don't think I expected to see you become a petty figure in a petty ducal court. I shall not be here when you come back. As you wish. And the children. It may not be very easy to explain that you left them for a Russian princess. I've made provisions for the children. Provisions? Don't blackmail me with the children, Marie. You know that I love them, and I'll see them again. I'll see them would be quite pointless, France. What will you do? 
give us a recital in the nursery. Goodbye, Francis. Someday you'll regret what you've done. interrupted anything important? No, nothing important. Your guest, the Countess Jagu, would not be flattered. Are you surprised that we know everything that goes on in our little realm? Then you know that the lady in question is leaving Weimar. Fortunately. One scandal is more than enough. Princess Caroline has fled from Russia in defiance of the Tsar. The divorce is refused. My brother has also expressed the hope that I will not receive her at our court. Why, oh, yes. I have not said that I agreed. I wish the Tsar was as generous as you are, madam. <laughs> he has more sense. Does your highness know when the princess will be expected in Weimar? She has taken refuge with the Lishnovskis in Vienna. There's revolution in Vienna. I don't think that even a revolution would delay Princess Caroline for long. Your Highness, I prefer not to wait. Have I, have I your permission to leave? Wait here. Felix, is she safe? Perfect. Got her out of the city as soon as she arrived. Vienna's no place for a visiting princess. Or a resident prince, for that matter. Where is she? At my hunting lodge. God bless you, Felix. You're not going there tonight. Don't be a fool. You'll never get across the city. I'll go round it. Caroline?
once. The Tsar refused his consent to the divorce. I knew about it last night. The Grand Duchess told me before I left Weimar. Caroline. Caroline. The Tsar cannot keep us apart. Nothing on earth. Oh, in heaven. Do you believe that it must be? That our marriage is God's will, no matter what they do against us, do you? I believe in our love. I want it to be blessed, not cursed. I want it to be an acknowledged love. I want your mother's blessing on it. My mother's? Take me to her, Franz. I not only want to go forward with you into the future, I want to go backward, too. Into the past. All you have been, all you shall be, I want it to be mine forever. Welcome to my mother's house. Mother. Run. This is Caroline. Madam, I hope you call me daughter soon. Oh, here it is. The piano. The piano you practiced on. Ten hours a day. How charming. Was he an obedient little boy, madam? I can't imagine France being obedient. I can see him practicing, but angry at the keyboard. What's the matter? Is anything wrong? I'm afraid you'll wake the children. The children? Are they here? Yes, Franz. Your children are here and sound asleep. Marie, I... I want to see them. Oh, no, Franz. They're very tired from the trip. I wanted to tell you in Weimar that I was on my way here with them, but you had other things on your mind. The Countess Dagu, the Princess Heinrich Wittgenstein. Serenaded, glorious one. He will never divorce them for you. I intend to love him, Madame, more than the crowd does. Do you think, Princess? I love him less. I met Franz at a musical party. I remember he played a ballad in A flat major by Chopin. I thought I'd never seen anything as beautiful as Franz looked when he sat at the piano. I, I wanted to cry. He watched me as he played. Franz never fails to notice a pretty woman in his audience. Afterward, he followed me into the hall. I remember he said, may I escort you somewhere, madame? And I said, 
Yes. And he said, where? And I said, paradise. He didn't smile. He said, I'll call a carriage. Did he? What? Drive you there to paradise? He doesn't know the road, madame. You must be quite desperately in love to imagine that you could prevail on the Tsar. I was relying on your influence, Maria Pavlovna. The only thing that would influence my brother or your insufferable husband in a matter of this kind is money. A great deal of money. I will give up everything. Everything, in your case, is much too much, my dear. Don't be too ready to trade half the Ukraine for a handsome musician. Maria Pavlovna. I am so sure in my heart that he's been entrusted to me. So sure I am God's instrument in this, that I will do anything, agree to anything to get this divorce. I believe you would. Will you tell the Tsar that, that I ask nothing of my husband but my freedom? That I am willing to give up all my estates? I will do this for you, my dear. But you're sacrificing a great deal for a man whose reputation is paralyzed. Has it occurred to you that he might not want marriage, even if you get a divorce? <laughs> I know his reputation, Maria Pavlovna. Who does not? But that is not the list I love. Not the man I'm going to make mine. I beg your help. Let us walk across the park to the theatre and listen to the great man. Gentlemen, this is treason. You are betraying a man of genius. This must have a very high opinion of Richard Wagner's work to take such infinite trouble. Perhaps too much. I want him to devote some of his energy to his own work. This passage is meant to sound seductive. Seductive! Perhaps I'd better go before he gets really annoyed. I don't want him to feel any constraint in my presence. He's really quite patient. So I see. We'll commence again. <laughs>
Wagner. Wagner, how good of you to come. Not so loud. I can't even stay to hear my own music. I am a fugitive. A fugitive? There's a warrant out for my arrest. They forced me, List. That bass clarinet. What's a bass clarinet got to do with it? I needed a bass clarinet for Tannhauser. Do you think that miserable Dresden orchestra would give me one? Wagner, what have you done? I exposed them. Now they want to put me in prison. I must get away, List. To Switzerland before they shut the border. I need money. I haven't got very much money on me, but take this. It'll get you as far as Zurich. If you need any more, let me know. This is the score of my new opera, Lohengrin. Will you produce it here? No one else will touch it. I shall be honored. But remember, no changes. Every note just as written. Wagner, now listen. Take care of yourself, please. I hope he's safe. He is a monster. He's insufferable, but he writes music that touches the soul. That is no reason why you should let yourself be used by him. Yes, it's the only reason. You must serve your own talent. My talent is to serve music. As I wish I could serve God. With love, with devotion, and with no vanity. Whatever kind of man Richard Wagner is, his work enriches the human spirit. If I could help him with that work, if I could get his music to, 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 to more and more and more people, then I shall serve myself and man and God, Caroline. from you. Your beloved enters the room the way he plays the piano, always for effect. What do they want of you? It is not what I want from her. What's he doing here? I'm really disappointed in you, my dear. Your first lapse in taste. Franz! You may speak of me as you will, sir. I shall fight you or not. But if you insult the princess again, I shall kill you. I really believe he would. You have business here? I had. It is now concluded. The field is yours. Madam, you will regret this decision, of course. I trust without too much pain.
What a decision. What did you mean? I'm free. The Tsar has granted permission for the divorce. That's why Nicholas came to see me. <laughs> he came all this way from Russia just to tell you that. Oh, there were matters to discuss, papers to sign. What papers? Of no importance. These? You signed these? They mean nothing. They give him everything you own, your land and your property. But look what I have in exchange. Is this the price you had to pay? I can't. I can't let you give everything away. I gave away nothing. I have everything. And tomorrow, we'll make arrangements for the wedding. First, we'll see the Archbishop. No. No, Princess. Married by the Church, you are still married in the sight of God, notwithstanding any arrangements with an accommodating husband. Eminence, the Tsar gave his consent. The Tsar does not speak for God. We are confident of God's blessing. We ask only the Church's authorization. You asked the church to cast her mantle of respectability over a scandalous concubinage. Eminence, I protest. Franz. My office gives me the right, nay, the duty, to oppose the licentious and the profligate. You are a libertine, my son, and your notorious conduct has given scandal throughout the length and breadth of Europe. You have abused your great gifts and the fame they brought you. You have seduced married women but one with children and shamelessly abandoned her. Your Eminence, is there anything, anything I can say or do to prevail upon you? Yes. From this time on, it would be better if you never saw each other alone. Your Highness. Eminence. Never to see each other. What arrogance. Am I a peasant girl who ran off with a soldier that he should talk to me this way? I'm so cold. France, France, hold me! I belong to you. It doesn't matter what this churchman says. His eminence spoke for Rome. No, he spoke for himself. France, take me away anywhere. Europe is not the world. I know, but it's our world. Besides, you'd only regret it. No. Society's the same everywhere. Its laws are rigid. But I love you, France. I love you. And my heart tells me that what I wish for us is what heaven wishes. Yes, perhaps. But Caroline, not what the Archbishop wishes. I'll go to Rome. I'll ask the Pope for an annulment. An annulment? An annulment requires grounds and the recommendation of the Episcopal Court. And time, Caroline, time. We'll wait. What, for months, years? As long as need be. I'll, um, I'll offer my resignation to the Grand Duchess. And then 
We can take a house in Rome. No, you must stay in Weimar and work. It would only harm us, France. Prove they're wrong, all our enemies. The months will pass. I, I write every day. And when you come to me in Rome, bring me the most wonderful wedding gift, the music of Franz Liszt. taking the liberty of bringing your tray for the fourth time. Well, you can take it away. Take it away. Bring me some more brandy and some coffee. And don't interrupt me, there's a letter from Rome. You haven't eaten, sir. If I may take the liberty, sir, you're not taking care of yourself. I know, I know. Go away, go away. Congratulations to the princess. What an achievement to persuade the Vatican to change its mind. Is the annulment really official? The wedding takes place in Rome on the 22nd. It goes without saying that we should be honored by your highness's presence. Ah, I'm afraid that will not be possible. But you must tell the princess that Monsieur and Madame Liszt will always be welcome in Weimar. It's been a long wait. Yes, it has. But I've not wasted. My wedding present to Caroline will be a concert of my work. I hope it will be a great success. You know I've always admired your composition. But I have been told that much of your work is considered too difficult technically for others to play. Even by my best and most brilliant friends. <laughs> you have been alone in championing new music, and I commend you for it. Wagner and others owe you a debt of gratitude. But there is no list to champion you. I need only Caroline. She can drive you and inspire you to composition. But she cannot force others to play your work. I'll be blunt. I wondered if as a composer you're not the victim of your own virtuosity and the urge to display it. Perhaps your heart is still on the concert stage. This may surprise you, madame. My heart has never been on the concert stage. My tendency to vulgar exhibitionism, which you were too polite to qualify by so many words, is misleading. I despise my career as a virtuoso. A misunderstood genius? Perhaps you are, but by no one more than yourself. Goodbye, Franz Liszt. You're marrying a remarkable woman. I'm marrying an angel, madame. Canon, I want a Franciscan choir for the nuptial mass. Maestro Liszt, Canon Antigone. Am I intruding, Father? We were discussing your wedding, Signor. We were just talking about the choir, Franz. Perhaps the Maestro will honor us by selecting the music for the nuptial mass. Thank you. You've never heard the wedding march from Lohengrin, and that's a new opera by Richard Wagner. 
and I do not wish to hear it at my wedding. For the processional, I wish the organ to play a work of yours. May I remind you, Father, that tonight Monsieur Liszt is giving his concert. I shall look forward eagerly to hearing it, Maestro. I'm confident, Father. This will be the first of many opportunities to hear the work of Franz Liszt. We will discuss the arrangements further tomorrow. With pleasure. The Russian ambassador has requested an audience to discuss the annulment granted to Princess Carolyn Wittenstein. I thought that matter was closed. She's getting married tomorrow. He says he has new information from her former husband. Serious enough to reopen the case? We shall have to see. His Excellency, the Russian ambassador.
This is very improper on the eve of our wedding. In a few minutes, I shall send you away. For the last time. Uh -huh. Monsignor. Your Highness, Maestro. I have been charged by the Holy Office to convey this document into the hands of Her Highness Princess Wittgenstein. This was my mission, Your Highness. My regrets. Open it. Is it necessary? et accusationes, manu momenti de late fueri, sacre congregationes sancti uffici interum casus examinari deritu. Seu interdictu. Do you understand, Franz? Annulment has been refused. Why? 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 God is not mocked. What do you say? New elements and grave accusations. Grave accusations? Against whom? Against me. I am guilty, Frost. Guilty? Guilty of what? Of lies against my husband. I swore I had been forced to marry him as a minor. I accused him of, of various acts. He, he, it was the only way to get the annulment. I thought it was justifiable. That it was God's will that we should marry. 
thought it was only mine. And mine, and mine, Caroline, and mine. But it doesn't matter. Nothing matters now. We're together now and forever. No, Franz. Forever does not exist for us. I fought, I struggled, as long as I was able to believe that God has joined our lives. Well, he has. I'm nothing without you. But I was wrong. I misunderstood. When the cannon rose from that chair, everything became clear to me. I saw that you were never meant to belong to me. You are God's, his instrument, put here for his glory. Oh, Franz, how clear it is. I was sent to you only to lead you back to him. Goodbye, Franz. Goodbye, my heart. my earthly possessions, I leave to my beloved children, as I am about to go into retirement for a time. Such time to be spent in silence and in spiritual exercises. It's my most fervent desire to have forgiveness conveyed upon my soul, to seek absolution, joined with contrition and confession. And this I hope to attain in a monastery. Jesus Christus. In eternum. Amen. <laughs> 